Oil by Jonah Winter and Jeanette Winter. We're reading this book today with permission from the publisher, Simon & Schuster. From deep inside the earth it comes. There it goes. Hot and black, black and hot, up through the ground of the far, far north, pumped by machines all day long, all night long. Day after day, year after year, pumped by machines, designed and run by humans. All day long, all night long, oil. Pumped into a giant pipeline that crosses 800 miles of wilderness, oil. Bears are watching. Seals are watching. Flowing mile after mile. Across the tundra, across what had been unspoiled land, home to native people. And thousands of caribou, oil, flowing onward to a port on the ocean, oil. Pumped onto enormous ships to be transported farther still. One night, one such ship containing oil embarks on its journey out onto the clean, cold ocean water. Gliding past gigantic icebergs, moving swiftly through the night, and then... Clang! Crack! Clang! Crack! The ship runs aground onto a reef beneath the surface of the ocean. And just like that, oil gushes out of holes, some of them as big as a house. Oil. What do you think is going to happen to the whales and the fish? Bubbling up to the surface of the water, thick black oil spreading. Till black waves fall with a thud onto rocky beaches. Rocks that had been clean for millions of years are now black and glistening with oil. But some of the rocks aren't rocks at all. Hmm. Uh oh, they are seabirds and sea otters. Thousands of them, dead and dying. There are some people who try to help. They bring the struggling otters and birds to a rescue center. They bathe the birds and otters, wash away the oil. But most of the animals die and the oil keeps spreading.
and spreading and spreading for days, weeks, months, till the oil covers thousands of miles of ocean. There's the glistening oil. Look how far it's gotten from where the leak started in the boat. Thirty years later, there are thousands of sea otters once again. There are thousands of seabirds once again. But this place is not the same. The herring are gone. Many of the killer whales are gone, never to return. For native people who have fished here for thousands of years, things are not the same. Their way of life still has not recovered and the beaches may look clean, but if you lift a rock, oil seeps up. It's still there, even after all this time. The end. Exxon Valdez and Oil Spill Cleanup. Now that we've read Oil, let's find out about the true events in the story. Oil tells the story of one of the worst oil spills in history, the Exxon Valdez oil spill. In 1989, an oil tanker called Exxon Valdez hit coral in the ocean. This accident caused the boat to start to leak oil into the water. For more facts about this spill, we're using the book Oil Spill by Melvin Berger, illustrated by Paul Maroka. We're using this book with permission from the publisher, HarperCollins Publishers. The Exxon Valdez spilled out 11 million gallons of oil. That much oil could fill over 1,000 big swimming pools. The sticky oil soon covered 11,000 square miles of ocean water. That is an area as big as the state of Maryland. It's an area even bigger than all of the Hudson Valley, where we live too. It damaged about 1,250 miles of Alaska's coastline. That is longer than the entire Atlantic coast of the United States. Oil spills have many causes. Some are accidents. A tanker like the Exxon Valdez runs aground or collides with another tanker or ship. Workers make mistakes as a tanker is being loaded or unloaded. An undersea oil well starts to leak. A tank or a pipe breaks at a shore oil terminal. Some oil spills occur on purpose. The tanker captain tells workers to clean out the tanks. Sometimes they flush the old oil into the ocean, even though they're not supposed to. The causes of oil spills differ, but the result is the same. Sea life still suffers as the oil spreads out. It floats on the top of the water. Experts on oil spills rush to the scene. They start to clean up the mess. Their first job is to stop the oil from spreading. They may put a boom around the spill. The boom is like a collar. It keeps all the oil in one place. You can see a boom in this picture, but look how far the oil was able to spread before the scientists could arrive and help. That's not going to be easy to clean up. For small spills, the experts may call for a skimmer. There are several kinds of skimmers. One type works like a giant vacuum cleaner. It sucks up the oil from the water. Sometimes the oil the skimmer collects can be used again. For some small spills, experts place special pads on top of the oil. The pads are like sponges. They soak up the oil. Then they have to get rid of the soaked up oil. For larger spills, the experts may set the oil on fire, but the fire sends smoke and gas into the air and leaves ash in the water. 
That's not great for the environment either. Cleanup crews also use chemicals like dispersants to get rid of large oil spills. People aboard planes or boats spread the chemicals on the oil. The oil breaks down into tiny bits. The tiny bits mix with the water and are less harmful to ocean life. Eventually, the small bits are broken down. In time, the oil from most spills drifts up onto the shore. Scientists will sometimes add bacteria to the oil along the shore. The bacteria eats the oil, sort of, and make it less dangerous. Do you think this would work for a big oil spill? Mm, you would need huge amounts of bacteria to get rid of a big oil spill. Sometimes the experts decide that no action is the best way to treat an oil spill. The wind and waves mix the oil and water together. It is like mixing oil and vinegar to make salad dressing. In time, much of the oil disappears. This isn't a good way to deal with big spills or spills in areas where many animals live, however. But it's not just up to the experts to help clean up oil spills. There are also things we can do every day that will help prevent oil spills in the future. We can use less oil. If we use less oil, there will be fewer oil tankers in the oceans and fewer oil pipelines. Then, the chance of oil spills will not be as great. One way to save oil is to use less electricity. Electricity is often produced by burning oil. Less electricity means less oil. Another way to cut out oil needs is to use less gasoline, which is made from oil. That means driving smaller cars and staying within the speed limit. Lastly, we can cut back on our use of plastic. Take a look at this poster from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They're part of our government. It shows a lot of everyday plastic things that are made using oil. Spot anything in this picture that you have in your house? I do. A toothbrush, nail polish, and an inflatable pool. Using earth-friendly versions of these products that aren't made of plastic, or cutting them out of our lives altogether helps prevent oil spills. Thanks for joining us for this reading. We hope that this Earth Day, you'll consider ways that you can do your part to help prevent oil spills and protect our planet.